Hey there, Affordable Buddies. Are you ready for the Affordable Board? Yay! It's Affordable Board time. It's Affordable Board time. <laughs> Hopefully, I haven't scared away all the new viewers right off the bat here. But what is the Affordable Board for those new viewers? Well, the Affordable Board is a series of videos where I comb the internet for the cheapest pedals I can find. And in the very best of them, my very favorites end up living on the official affordable board, which as you can tell is in need of some Velcro right now. So what do we have this time? What do we have this episode of the affordable board? Well, I've got two pedals here from Most Guy, not from Most Guy, made by Most Guy. They didn't send them to me. This is Patreon funded content. So if you like the idea of independently funded demos slash reviews of the very cheapest pedals on the internet. Consider checking out the Patreon link down below. You can support this ridiculous content for as little as a dollar a month. I mean, Patreon takes a significant cut of that one dollar, but you, know, you can figure it out. <laughs> so what, what do we have here? I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of that. You can figure it out on your own. We've got two pedals here that I've been wanting to check out since they launched. I've got the LM741 preamp and the Big Fuzz. And these are very different looking to me versus most affordable board pedals. See what I mean? These aren't mini pedals. They don't have three or four knobs and a foot switch and bad art. They've got these rotary switches, giving you a bunch of different mods. They have extra switches on them, they have a great big jewel light, and of course they have bad art on them because they are affordable board pedals. These are each in like the low 40s, I believe. I'll put up screen grabs of the prices of these guys, but let's, let's take a look at this. This is the LM741, and I bought this because it appears to be a DoD 250 style overdrive. At least it has a 250 setting right there. It also has an MR and a 308 setting. It has a low switch. And then the mod switch here, the mod wheel rotary switch guy, it's got a silicon option, a germanium option, a soft option, and a boost option. There's a lot going on here. And then of course the level and gain control knobs that I'd expect on a 250. We'll find out. Does it actually sound like a 250? And then the big fuzz. Three knobs, volume, tone, sustain. It's easy to guess that this is gonna be a big muff, especially when there's a Pi symbol right there. A tone bender setting. I didn't even know that those circuits could be related. An M setting, is that just regular muff? And then a booster setting and a voice switch. This is not your standard affordable board layout. It's standard affordable board prices at the low 40s. But I'm compelled. I want to know what these things sound like. There's a bunch of other pedals in the line too. So if these are good, maybe it'll be worth checking out the other ones as well. So let's get wired up and see what they sound like. In affordable board tradition, I'm going to use an affordable guitar. This time, this Three Brothers Super Strat style thing here. You can find these on Amazon at $3.99 last time I checked. And they really just Spec the turds out of these things. There is a lot going on here. Baked maple neck, really nicely dressed frets, bone nut, locking tuners, shimmery, quilty finish on the top. The pickups, I'm not 100% on. I might swap those pickups out in the near future. The bridge pickup is just a little bit too dark for me. And believe it or not, the single coils are a little bit too bright. So before I show you those sounds, I'm gonna tell you a very important thing. I'm gonna be running into the two Princeton's rig. Shocking, I know. <laughs> People watching this channel for the first time are like, what the hell is going on here? All right, so here is that bridge pickup. As a clean reference, and here is the next single. The sparkle on those single coils is ridiculous. And let's get into it. I want to check these things out. I've been curious about them for months. So I'm going to start with the preamp, the LM741. Let's set everything to noon. We've got a low switch. No idea 
what does what yet? There was no paperwork in the boxes, no manuals included. MR250 and 308 across this switch. And then a mod switch that gives a silicon, germanium, soft, and boost. I'm gonna start on silicon and 250 and the low switch down. I don't know if that's off or on, but we're about to find out. Start on the bridge pickup. It doesn't sound like a 250. Let's get some more volume. just underneath the main signal. Oh. Fuzzy and fizzy. Is that supposed to be like a tube screamer thing? Yeah, it totally like gates out. Like, a quarter second, half a second after you play the note. I guess it depends on how strong the note is. How interesting, what is that? Don't hear it as strongly on a strummed chord. power chord. How strange. I don't think I've ever heard that type of like tight, fizzy, fuzzy, gating distortion underneath an overdrive like that. Like two screamers are known to be fizzy, but it sustains throughout. How strange. Let's check out uh, the low switch. <laughs> Up is the lows option and down is lows off. sound yet or if I love it like is that gonna become my new thing that I chase or am I gonna grow to despise it I kind of like that it's it's different at least it's something new it's not just the same old same old it sounds like those really sparkly like champagne fireworks going off the, the fireworks that go shh you know what I'm talking about shh you know what I'm talking about, right? I can't tell if the lows are boosting lows or filtering off the highs. It almost sounds like it's filtering off the highs though. Yeah, it sounds louder in the down position, which makes me think the low switch is filtering off the highs. It's a low pass filter. Interesting. Let's check it out. Let's do this switch. We've been on 250, which doesn't really sound like a 250 to me. I'll, I should compare it to an actual 250 circuit at some point in the video. Then down to 308. 308 is the rat chip, right? I'm not imagining that. Is this going to sound like a rat? It sounds less fizzy. got thicker, that fizziness is gone. There might be 
might be a little hint of it. Then up to MR, whatever that is. I want to think it's supposed to mean MXR for like the distortion plus. <laughs> What is that? It sounds like the 250 setting because it has that fizzy, crispy thing going on on the edges. But it also sounds like it's being run through like a cocked wah, like close to the heel position. What an unusual sounding pedal so far. The 308 sounded the most normal. Let's check out the gain range and go through those three again, and then we'll start getting into the silicon, germanium, soft, boost, etc. stuff. So gain all the way up here. It's got gain. I don't know if that's supposed to be a wrap, but it doesn't have a filter knob. So they can't be trying to do a wrap with this, right? Okay, I like the chaos of that. I like that fizzy, fuzzy, gritty, broken thing coming in and out of a big strummed high gain chord. That was fun. You start a song with that? And everyone listening is going to be like, okay, here we go. It's time to rock and roll. What's about to happen? This sounds dangerous. Let's try it with the lows on. Not bad, but I prefer the lows off. That bright, bright, gritty, crispy sound. All right, now the MR.
plane settings now. What do we have to work with? I'm not sold on this being a 250. It sounds interesting. It sounds really cool. I'm intrigued by it. I'm not sure that's a 250. I think a 250, usually when you turn the gain all the way down, doesn't it turn off? Don't you lose everything? I really hear that fizz start to come in right about there. Maybe it is, maybe it started as a 250 and the circuit just became so different that it's it's missing some of the qualities that I'm familiar with. It does sound darker with the gain under noon, but it doesn't have that kind of warm, but open sort of sound that I'm used to from a 250. It's got a more compressed, tight, muffled sound in a way. <laughs> I'll pull in a real 250 in a moment to do a comparison. All right, the mod knob now. We are on number one, which is silicon. Silicon or silicon, I can never remember. Here is a germanium setting. That's unusual. Usually, a germanium setting is way quieter than a silicon setting. Why is that louder? There's, there's more clipping on the silicon setting and that fizzy stuff going on as well. So maybe just because it's dialed in to have more clipping, it's quieter than the germanium setting. to the soft clipping option. See, that's what I would expect a germanium setting to sound like. Quieter and fizzier. She sounds great. I have a feeling this is gonna make it onto the affordable board. I like it so far. I like the chaos of that fizz cutting in and out. I like how bright and clear it is. In a way, it is doing the 250 thing in the way where it's not this mid-humped like two screener style focused overdrive. It's got this bright, spiky, wide open, almost like fuzz-like sort of nature to it.
I don't understand that MR setting, but I'm glad it's there. It's weird. That cocked wah, like, out of phase, but low vocal out of phase sort of sound. What an interesting decision for a pedal. Now on to the boost setting, the last setting. And then we'll move on to the fuzz after I try to compare this to a 250. I know this is gonna wind up being a longer video for two pedals. That's a boost. Less gain. Not no gain, but less gain than the others. Let's try it on the number four. mid-warmth. Or that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab a 250 now. Just because I'm curious. I've got the JHS Overdrive preamp here, which is a very specific, uh, model clone of a 250, but totally within the norm for what a 250 is supposed to sound like. Like this is supposed to be a clone of a very early version of a 250, but between you and me, all 250s kind of do the same thing. There's not a lot of differences in between the different years and models and eras and whatnot. It's a very simple, honest circuit. And that's what I like about it. So it is on right now. Switch is in the down position. Let's see if we can clone that sound over here. It's closer than I thought it would be. So yeah, it probably is a 250. I think it's got more gain on tap. I was wrong, it's a 250. <laughs> That fizziness, though. That's still unique to me. Like there's loose breakup in there. There's, there's loose grit, which I like. But it's not that fizz that's sustaining and then gating out. That is unique to this pedal. Oh. 
this is softer sounding. Let's try this without a. Still softer sounding. Let's try the uh, the soft clipping setting here. That might get us where we want to be. Yeah, I think the soft clipping setting is how to get closest to that 250 sound with the low switch up. It's not exact, but it's pretty good. This is gonna be a long video, I'm sorry. It's gonna be informative though, right? If you're curious about these $40 pedals, spending an hour of your life <laughs> watching some doofus mess around with them is gonna, is gonna, is gonna help you, right? It's gonna help you make a good decision whether or not you want these $40 pedals. All right, on to the big fuzz, which clearly is gonna be a big muff, right? Let's get this to stay still. There we go. We've got volume tone, sustain, the mod switch, and a voice switch. We'll start off on the Pi setting. Clean tone, just as a reminder. And the big fuzz with everything at noon on the Pi setting. Let's tune. That sounds like a muff. going on with the sustain all the way up.
That sounds cool. The top setting is what I think of when I think of a muff. Great, big, heavy, but plenty of room for some bright, nasty distortion on top of this booming, thick fuzz. The lower setting gives this like more mellowed out, but more mid forward sort of sound. It's probably excellent for leads. There's something going on there. People are gonna buy these. I should grab the baritone at the end of this video, shouldn't I? Let's go through the mods. The next setting is the tone bender. A muff and a tone bender in the same box. Damned if that doesn't sound pretty great. Try it on the next single. Buy it for the muff, stay for the tone bender. That. I'm gonna have to compare it against a muff and a tone bender now. Try turning down the guitar's volume. I don't do that often, but here I go doing it. I'm down at zero right now. Hopefully I can find an affiliate link for these things because I think they're going to sell themselves. I haven't even gotten into the other two mods on here. I'm like, yeah, buy these. Classic muff setting on the pie setting. The tone bender, that sounds like a tone bender to me. Once we get into a comparison, like we'll make a decision then. I haven't even tried the lower voice on the tone bender yet. Like octavy harmonics on that bright high end. 
that I really, really, really like. Not bad. Not bad, no sky. <laughs> has that sag with the sustain all the way up, just the same way the Pi setting did. They better not discontinue these or I'll be so pissed. Like, low 40s. It's like 41, 42 bucks or something like that. That sounded great. The M setting now, what is the M setting? stands for massive or it stands for the last letter in doom <laughs> that is that is so heavy and gritty and it really catches that sag with a sustain all the way up could make this better is if there was another switch to give an octave option then this would be covering a lot of bases so far three really strong fuzz sounds and then a booster setting 
Is it going to be a secret fuzz or is it going to be a boost? I'm not sure it's either. It's really dark. single still that's that's an odd setting it's really dark a little bit of crispy breakup on the edges someone explain that to me what are they what are they trying to do with that boost setting I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a muff and I'm gonna grab a tone bender they were in the same drawer together because of course they were. I've got the op amp big muff here. I know this is probably not op amp bass, but it'll get us close enough, right? And then a park fuzz sound by uh, by uh, <laughs> earthquake air devices. I couldn't remember, but this is basically a tone bender. We know this sounds like a muff, right? That's not that's not under questioning. Like we we know that's a muff. But let's just confirm it. It's a muff. What kind of muff, though? Definitely a muff. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, the gain character is a little bit different. The EQ voicing a little bit different. But this isn't the only muff out in the world. There are thousands of variations of muff out there. And that's the op amp variation. So I'm not expecting this big fuzz to sound identical. And I'm not expecting the park fuzz to sound identical either. interesting they have very similar tonal quality to them but on that single note run the park stood up much nicer this was pretty sloppy sounding and this had the clarity and the notes held up just a bit nicer to my ear <laughs> setting up.
Yeah, that upper setting holds up better, but it's not matching the tonality of that. But you're getting a lot to work with here. There's something going on where like those, those lead notes don't hold up as well as the park, but not bad. A surprising pedal. Both of these are surprising pedals. When, especially when you consider the price point. Low 40s, affordable board status on these guys. Yeah, you really can't complain. It's giving you a lot to work with here. It's, I don't, I don't think it's completely nailing the tone bender thing, but it's getting you in that territory. And that M setting, whatever that is, is, is massive and gnarly and nasty. I'm gonna grab the baritone and then we'll do the affordable board ceremony. The Kuvavi might have to watch its back. There's a lot going on here. Ah, I don't want to kick off the Kuvavi though. It's it's iconic at this point. Should I just, should we do like a Kuvavi retirement ceremony at some point? Because it's, it, well, we'll get into that. It just feels unfair to all the other really good fuzzes that have come through to let the Kuvavi remain on the board, even though it's amazing, it's excellent, it's unique. I haven't found any other affordable board fuzzes that sound anything like the Kuvavi. But are we doing a disservice to the fuzz world, to the affordable fuzz world, by making it a sacred cow? Let's, uh, let's think about that while I get doomy with the baritone. <laughs> That sag. Ooh, it feels like it's sucking the air out of the room. I'm signing off on them. Those are great pedals. Are they perfect? No, nothing's perfect. But for affordable board pedals, everything that they're bringing to the table, are you kidding me? I don't usually look in the camera and just look you in the eyes and say, buy them. That's not something I do around here commonly. But yeah, th those are cool. So yeah, let's have a look at the affordable board. I know that I want to kick off one of these Effect Bakery modulation. <sighs> Should it be the chorus or the vibe? The vibe is great because it's so unique in the affordable board kind of realm of things. I don't run into vibes very often. And when I do, they're in like a digital multi sort of thing. 
where it's hiding next to like three different flavors of flanger that are all kind of awful and the vibe itself is really not that great this does that more like soft analog sort of vibe like it's special it's different i like special and different i want to show off things that stand out on the affordable board but i probably more likely to use chorus if i'm being honest with myself also got an overdrive here but i remember this being a darker like tube screamer like a noble style sort of sound like that mid focused fizzy sort of grit which might play really well with this i could treat them both going into each other as a distortion which is what i tend to do on my personal pedal boards i'll have a 250 and then a fizzy mid hump sort of thing before it to fill it out and give me a thick distortion sound. So I could keep both. There's no real rules. I don't have to have only one of each style thing. Like this is an overdrive and that's an overdrive, but this is also a distortion. Let's, uh, I'm gonna pull the chorus. There's a ton of affordable board choruses out there. I put this on here to kick off something else that didn't need to be there. Um, let's just focus on these dirt pedals for now. And then we'll be concerned with modulations another day. The affordable board is very serious business and we don't want to play around <laughs> and disrespect pedals that belong on the affordable board. And the fuzz situation. Let me show you the Kuvabe. Let me show you what we're working with here. And then we'll do a quick comparison. My gut is telling me that we can't let the Kuvave dominate forever. At some point, it has to retire, right? It's not fair. And I keep it on there just because it's so unique. It's so crushingly heavy. It's totally different from every other affordable board fuzz so far. Do we have power? There we go. Long live the Kuvave. Should it remain on the board? Kuvave in a world where there is no Kuvave. Th this would be on the board right now, no questions. But it's, it's the Kuvave, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's special. It's inspiring to me. I play different when I turn it on. Like, this is really cool. It covers a lot of ground. I fully recommend this after messing with it for a, a, an hour. I've been filming a long time. I'm gonna cut a lot of stuff out. But man, you can't. The only reason I bought the Kuvabi in the first place is because I thought it was weird that it had a USB jack on the side. All of these, uh, all these pedals from Kuvabi, they've, they've rebranded into uh, Mvave, Mvave. 
They still sell the same pedals, but it is a different brand name now. I haven't found anything else like it. It's unique. I'm gonna leave it. Tell me in the comments section if you think I'm wrong, but I'm gonna leave it. Let's, uh, let's stack these overdrives and check out how this fits into the whole board. Effects Baker, you like swept the board. <laughs> A couple months ago, just took over. I had four effects bakery pedals on here. Now we're down to three. And now we're gonna have two most guys. The most guy spring reverb, a long-standing classic on the affordable board. Yeah, it's got that dry, crispy, chunky sort of sound. <laughs> Try it on the next single. There it is. It likes the singles. something else. Thank <laughs> you. 
recognize that riff, we can be friends. And we're definitely around the same age. <laughs> Now in its current state, I would I would gig the affordable board no problem. We got a crazy, heavy, ridiculous fuzz. We've got a fun vibe just to have something fun and silly, a little treat to help you along your way. We've got a mid humped overdrive feeding into a bright, crispy EQ open overdrive building pedal here that I'm very excited about. We've got a full-size pedal back on the affordable board. The Most Guy Spring Reverb, standing the test of time. It doesn't really, it doesn't drip, but it has this surfy tonality that I get along with well. It's a very good example of that built-in brick style, kind of like clap back, slap back, fast stacked delay take on a spring reverb sort of sound. I'm like this is a budget Topanga, basically. And then we've got a delay. I don't remember why I picked this, but I like it. It sounds good. <laughs> and then we have a tremolo, another effects bakery pedal down here. It's got a volume control. And I remember shooting it out against the previous tremolo and just being like, mm, it just sounds a little better. I'm very picky with my trims. So I must have picked it for a reason. It sounded great the little bit that I used it just now. Let's do like a clean. That's a great sounding trim. Are you kidding me? All right, so what do you guys think? You made it to the end. Do you feel accomplished? Do you feel like you did something with your life? Do you feel like you spent your time wisely? You didn't. <laughs> Unless you were really intensely shopping for these two pedals. I feel like you might have wasted your time, but you had fun, didn't you? And that's never a waste. Invest in your own entertainment. Invest in scratching your own personal interest itches. There's nothing wrong with taking some time to yourself and watching something that you didn't need to watch just because it was entertaining to you. I don't know why I'm telling you this. You already know. <laughs> I, I've been recording for two hours now, so I'm a little bit slap happy. But anyways, huge thanks to the Patreons. Are you kidding me? I've been able to do more and more Patreon content lately. Uh, Patreon content is great because I'm able to pick stuff that I know you, the audience, are going to like. It's not just stuff that falls in my lap because manufacturers hit me up or whatever. It's like, I think my audience will want to know about that. And I've got money sitting there in a budget that I can use to buy it all because 
a bunch of you decide to pledge a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. No one's doing that. No one's doing a hundred thousand dollars yet. You could be the first <laughs> and you will never see me ever again after a year. I'll let it collect for a year and then I'll just disappear and I'll move into the woods and I'll carve your name into a tree and say, thank you for the million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, like I said, I'm slap happy. Look at all those names. Thank a Patreon. Pick a name out and thank them in the comments down below because they made this content, past content, and future content that you enjoy watching possible. If you want to be one of them, link down below. Other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude, nasty comment, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody. <laughs>